If you lift the lid of a computer, you will see a circuit board into which a number of little boxes have been... For all the heralded advances, Each computers basically run the same as they did seven decades ago. Back when Alan Turing built the first, the language was and remains ones or zeros. Computers, of course, got smaller, faster, more storage, but the basics, they haven't changed until now. Vancouver-based D-Wave has earned the term revolution with the world's first commercially available quantum computers, machines that take those ones and zeros to a level of computing power that has never existed. Classically, you have a, uh, two bits, you can have four possible states, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1. In quantum mechanics, if you have two quantum bits, they can be in all four of those states at the same time. So not just one value, but they can be in all four values. And you can actually then do the, the uh, logic operations you want on all four of those states at the same time. Confused a bit? Well, let's try this again. Okay, let's try to simplify this a little bit. Imagine this room is a library and we just take one book and on just one page, we write an X. Now we close it and we ask a computer, a computer of today to try to find it. And it does so by going through each page one at a time and does so very quickly. But if it didn't know which book in this library that X was on, it would have to go through every single book, every single page and would take a lot longer. But what if it was looking for that one X on that one page and it had to sort through every single book in the world? There are billions of them and it would take a computer of today centuries. Probably would be impossible. But a quantum computer, that's where things change completely because it goes through all of the books and all of the pages all at the same time and finds that X in seconds. So you can see that quantum activity can only happen at extreme temperatures, so the quantum processor needs to be really cold. So it's the coldest sustained temperature known to man in the, in the universe. Chips this is the coldest in, place on Earth. Inside these chips, inside each one of these systems is the coldest place in the universe. In the universe, not just on Earth. That's right. In the coldest place, Jeremy Hilton is one of the coolest guys. He takes me inside the computer, which is basically a giant fridge. So all of this is the cooling system. It is, okay. So it's the, essentially the fridge. Okay. The quantum technology essentially gets mounted to this plate at the bottom. These wires are how we communicate with it and extract information from it. So it's a chip. It's, it's a chip the size of your thumbnail. It's a chip the size of your thumbnail, but you need all of this to protect it and keep it cold enough. Exactly. Yeah. Mm. And when we do that, then it can perform quantum computations that are uh, miraculous. D-Wave's major focus right now is concentrating on finding applications and finding uh, users of the technology who have major problems that they're not solving effectively classically. When Jeremy Hilton talks about solving major problems, he's talking about the biggest problems facing humanity itself. Climate change, cancer, genetic abnormalities, stopping famine. It's a really long list. So it's not like people are trying to solve them now and with next year's computer, it'll be much faster and they'll all be happy. It's like there's no hope. You can't solve those problems. Those are fundamentally hard problems that we just can't tackle effectively classically. We have to make too many assumptions and then the models are lost. Over at One Cubit, also in Vancouver, they're the ones writing the code to harness the power of D-Wave's quantum computers and solve all those unsolvable problems. Okay, so uh, who was good in math in high school? These guys. <laughs> <laughs> all of them, all of them. And you too? I was good at math in high school, but the math that we're using here uh, far exceeds uh, my personal capabilities. Andrew Firstman and Landon Downs founded OneCubit nearly four years ago, hiring some of the brightest minds on the planet to develop their quantum software. We've been working mainly on uh, quantitative finance, energy, and uh, life sciences, predominantly looking at pharmaceuticals and a little bit of genetics. These areas all have very, very complex optimization problems, and we've uh, worked on quite a few in each of those areas. Outside of that, we believe uh, almost anywhere you find an optimization problem, you're going to be able to apply quantum systems. That's what's happening now. Just listen to what they expect quantum computing to solve in the near future. We'll be able to use 
quantum computers to simulate the quantum world, and that'll be really exciting for things like, um, you know, in the bio field, looking at cures for diseases. I think many people can get excited about that sort of thing. Talked about everything from being able to do routing of traffic with a city planner, looking at using optimization algorithms. So. There's some things that are a little bit further down the way that really have the opportunity to be real game changers. Another change, the size. So much of computing is already happening in the cloud that soon enough, your phone will have the power of quantum, sending the most difficult problems to it and getting a response immediately. David Coleman, CBC News, Vancouver.